Uh, uh, Mark, I know you've been taking part in uh, uh, small gr- small boat discussion groups uh, in number 10, talking about this issue. Is this the sort of solution that you wanted to see? Well, it's definitely part of the solution, Tom. You talk about the cost, £6 million. Well, that's nine days what we're spending on uh, hotel accommodation in the UK. So working in France to stop uh, some of the boat crossings, and we've seen, you know, the that collaboration previously under previous agreements stop uh, nearly as many uh, migrants crossing the channel this year as have actually crossed. So it does work. It is part of the solution. But of course, what we've got to do, Tom, is remove the draw for people, for these economic migrants coming to the UK. You know, they're, they're not fleeing persecution. We know this. We've, we've gone through this uh, a number of times. They're not uh, fleeing persecution. They're economic migrants crossing the channel and abusing our hospitality at a cost currently of £6.8 million per day in hotel accommodation. And we've got to stop that um, immediately. I think no one, no one would disagree that the cost on hotels, not just in financial terms, but also to the communities that they are in and the lost economic activity is immense. However, of course, there are a mix of people coming across on the boat, some uh, economic migrants, some genuine asylum seekers. Uh, Why are there no general routes for people to apply to claim asylum to the United Kingdom uh, from outside the United Kingdom? If you want to claim asylum and and, and you're not from Ukraine or from Afghanistan or a similar specific case, the only way to do so is to get here illegally. So we open up routes wherever there's um, large conflict, uh, as we've seen in Syria, Afghanistan uh, and other places, uh, we do open up where there are other issues such as uh, in Hong Kong with the, the CCP um, you know, reintroducing uh, um, a standard of living that, that the Hong Kongers aren't uh, used to and we, we have a, a debt to those Hong Kongers, we open up routes for them too. So we, as, as a country, we've been known uh, and are known to act when we need to. Of course, there are, um, these people cross many, many safe countries in, in most circumstances to get here. A lot of them have documentation that they then dispose of en route. You know, we know that people are flying into um, Belgium, for example, before making the crossing. You know, they have to have documentation to make that flight. And then, of course, by the time they get over the channel, that documentation has gone um, you know, the, the, the system has been abused, Tom. And that means we have absolutely no political latitude at the moment. So we need migration for uh, growth. We've just been talking to Mark Littlewood there about the, our growth needs. We're going to need migration in this country to do what we need to do in terms of growing our economy. But we have no political latitude until we get a grip of the illegal migration across the channel. Just looking at the terms of this deal expected to be signed later today, British observers for the first time will be uh, on those beaches watching uh, the French uh, go about their business trying to stop those small boats. Why did we insist on observers? Do we not think the French are doing their job uh, properly? I mean, I would like to comment on uh, on what the French were. We know that the French have been stopping. They've stopped a thousand boats this year. I think is the figure twenty nine thousand um, potential migrants. So we know that the French are uh, undertaking some uh, work on the beaches, and that does work. Um, I mean, obviously, we want, I'm sure, to be able to see. Uh, the scale of the problem for ourselves and it, you know it's worthwhile having british observers there to do that we need to make much more use of technology um i sat in a command center in cyprus last year that could watch 20 miles off the coastline on um radar and cctv um you know we, we know that there's we can use drone technology which i think this agreement uh, increases use of there's lots of things we can do but of course it is boots on the ground that will stop these boats getting into the water but the scale of the problem is such that i'm not convinced uh, well well i know that it is not the only answer it's just mm. part of the problem we've got to remove the draw so just finally uh, mark jenkinson what further steps would you like the home secretary to take uh, on top of these new increased patrols 
Well, we need to make Rwanda work. We need flights to leave to Rwanda. We need people to know that if you come here without good reason, and the Nationality Borders Act makes it um, a criminal offence to land on the UK um, without leave to remain, it uh, means you can be treated as a different uh, priority for asylum if you uh, say things that aren't true or you've got connections to third countries. For example, some of these people have made applications in, in other countries, which gives them that connection. So we need to make much more use of our new powers in the Nationality and Borders Act. We need to implement the modern slavery provisions of the Nationality and Borders Act. We need to stop. If you, if you know that you're going to get 400 days here, which is the average time taken to process a modern slavery claim, um, then you know it's worth coming and you can abscond in that 400 days if you don't think that your claim is going to be successful. Uh, what we need to do is fix the modern slavery provisions. We need to get flights off the ground to Rwanda and we need to stop using hotel accommodation and start using large detention centres. You, you, you cannot come here illegally. This has to be the message. You cannot come here illegally and um, access all the things that British people can, free healthcare, uh, schooling, and all the other things that taxpayers like you and I uh, and all of my constituents are paying for uh, and expect that to last. You, 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 the message has to be that that will not be allowed. Well, it's a long laundry list to get cracking on with for the Home Office, no doubt uh, building upon the deal, which I'm told was signed at 8 a.m. this morning. So there we go. First step already uh, going there. But Mark Jenkinson, thank you for your thoughts this morning. It's a fascinating conversation and no doubt one we will return to.